Praise be the glory of God. Just reflecting on the scenery of what we saw, not even the words, knowing that our Savior has been born, just reflecting on that, that a child would bring salvation and hope to fulfill God's word. Let us enter into the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 7. In Matthew, we're listening for a word, and it's three wise men that will bring a word and receive a word. When Herod secretly called for these wise men and they learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared, then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at his rising until it stopped over a place where a child was. Then they saw that the star had stopped there where they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they kneeled down and paid homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for the people of God. The title this morning is When God Speaks a Word. Whenever God speaks a word, the word is already fulfilled when God speaks it. Nothing else has to be done, nothing needs to be added, for God has spoken a complete word. If we go back to Genesis, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of, the God, the Spirit of God, the face the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And so God saw that light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The first thing God created was light. The first thing he called into existence was light. So that we would be able to function and see without any distractions, light. When you enter a room, the first thing you do, you turn on a light. Anywhere you're going, you want that place to be lit. So you run into nothing, nothing stops you or hinders you because you can see all around you. So God said, let there be light. A word was spoken. It was no one there to hear it other than the elements of the earth and it fulfilled a word that was spoken. Let there be light. But then there also must be darkness if there is light because everything God created, he created the opposite to have a whole effect. So light we rise, we shine, we bring forth the glory of God. In darkness we rest, we sleep. We're restored so that when morning come, we rise with the sun in our hearts. He goes before us, he's within us, and then he leaves us a gift called the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. So everything we needed when we were created was already fulfilled within us and with what God had already created. When we go to 26, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over everything, creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and free male. He created them. Then God said, bless them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. 
Fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds, over the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields, see which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird and everything in the air, to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given everything green herb for food, and it also was so. And God saw that everything he had made, indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God has created everything for us. It's nothing left for us to do but to live in it according to God's word. So what is this word that becomes a living word that we live out of? For God said every word that proceeds out of my mouth is a living word. We're God's living word. We will proceed out of his mouth. For we were no more than dirt, than clay. He formed a body and he life into us. We were without soul. We was without purpose. We were without anything. We were void. We were darkness. And then with he gave us light and life for us to live in perfect harmony with him. But yet, we did not listen to God's word. It wasn't hard. Don't do it. Don't do it. How hard is it? You have everything. I have given you everything that's good. I provided for you. I made a place for you. And then I gave you everything you would need while you live in this place. But don't. Don't. Uh -uh -uh. Don't. But what God chose not to do was to take choice and will away from his creation. Why is that? Because he said that you were created in our image. That means that when you look at yourself, you see God, your heavenly father who loved you, that created you out of nothing. Not because he needed to, but because God wanted something other than God to love. So he created humanity. Then he said that our image, so you're in the image of Christ obedience to the Father. Not because he said so, but because you love him. For it was a cup that was a bitter cup that was not the cup that was to be served to Christ. Christ's intention in tears, sweat, and blood. I, I, I don't want this. It is bitter. It doesn't taste good. God created something good, but we became bitter. Ooh, could you imagine a cup that's been prepared for you? Because we chose not to listen to the word of God that had been given. So now here's an innocent that was born into the world as a child to give us hope and life. Hmm. And now he must grow from the cradle to the cross to death to life so that we may come back to our Father. But yet, we don't listen. How long does it take us to repeat the same thing over and over and over again before we stop? I don't know. How long does it take? It's like that commercial with the Tootsie Roll. How many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll? The hour never could get all the licks because he was so excited to get to the center. We need to be that excited about a true God that loves us. 
We should be so excited that in 2022, we go into his word, the recorded word of God, so that we may be a testimony to the living word of God. But first, we got to enter in. See, if we don't know God's word, how can we live it? How can we reflect it? How do we know if we even have it if we don't know it? John Wesley made a statement that I cannot live without God. I have no purpose without God. But God chooses to do nothing without me. See, we must understand that God does not need us. Remember in the beginning when I was reading and he called light to be? Were we there? No. When he created everything upon the earth, were we there? No. So it's factual that we are not needed, but we're chosen. Each person in this room has been called, chosen, and created by God. Not as nothing, not as a void, not as what could be, but what is. We are limited to the things that we do because we limit God. We don't listen to God because we can't see God. But we do. We just choose not to see him. Look to your left and to your right real quick and say, I see Christ in you. Now live 2022 as if you see Christ in your neighbor. Love yourself and love your neighbor as if you see Christ. Not the things that they have, not the things that they can offer you, not the things that they've done to you, but as Christ. So I want you to think about this for a minute. Does Christ hurt his creation? No. He sent his only begotten son to take all of that filth off of us. He's already done all of that. So he does not hurt his creation, he loves his creation. But his creation has a choice. The three wise men, it was three of them. So the first one couldn't say to the second one, I I, I didn't hear it. The third one couldn't say to the second one, are you sure it was God? Because they were all on the same accord. They all had the same purpose. And they were working for that same purpose purpose, the glorification, and the presence of God in our lives. So when they had the dream, don't go back to Herod, go back another way. They chose to listen. And it gave them time to get out of harm's way so that we have a Savior that lived and still lives today. And that Savior sent his son to be our savior. We don't celebrate Christmas for Santa Claus and gifts. We celebrate Christmas for light and life that was given unto us. We live out of hope through faith, seeking love. The world does the same thing, but they do it out of their brokenness, and we do it out of the wholeness of our Savior. So how do we listen to God? Well, one, stop looking for God in these fabulous places and start looking for him in the ordinary things of life. Start looking for him in the morning when the sun rises. Start looking for him when you go through your day and you're just walking out of your house. Look up and know that God placed all that there for you. 
When you get inside your car and you can turn your ignition and it starts and you have the capability to drive, give thanks to God because it's not of your own will. Stop thinking that you can do anything without God. It's a new year. We have new wine and a new purse. Ladies, you understand exactly what I'm getting ready to say. A new purse. One that's so special, no one can see it but you and God. It's the biggest one you're ever going to carry, but yet it's the lightest one. You have a glass that's overflowing and it's wine. And this wine is the manna that continues to flow. See, we followed him during the day by the manna that he served us. We follow him by the night through the light that he prepared for us. So you have a new purse in 2022. What you put in it must be of God because it's divine. We were created to be divine. It's not a person in this room that have not heard the voice of God. You may think you have not, but you have. It didn't sound like, this is God, let there, no. It sounded more like this. Can you spare a meal? Can you pray for me? Will you love me because I'm broken? Will you be there for me when no one else is there? When I come to the light that shines brighter than any light, the church that God created through giving up his life, will you not judge me because I'm dirty and I've lived under a bridge? But will you close me with God's love. When I've lived a hard life that may not reflect yours, will you look past what I've lived to see who I'm to become? Are you willing to roll up your sleeves and love me in spite of? Are you willing to forgive yourself for the things that you've done that's not what God has called you to do. I'm not talking about the big things. I'm talking about the small things. So this week we went on vacation. I'm going to share this and then we're going to wrap up. And we went to Hilton Head. Oh my God, I had the best time ever. Just sitting out. It's so peaceful. You just sit out and you see the water. And it only goes so far. And then they tell you, be careful, because sometimes it's gators in the grass. Your first mind is, okay, it's time to go. Don't want to run into a gator. But then you see them just relaxing. They're more afraid of us than we are of them. But they're just relaxing, sitting on the hill, chilling, relaxing, just like me, just like you would be, not bothering anybody. They hear a sound, and they go into their water because everything they need has been provided for them. The lakes have fish in it so they can eat. They have shade. They make little shaded places for them. They have an in bank so they can't go but so high, but yet sometimes they get out. So if I had provided everything for you, why do I need flesh? And you know what they say why they attack people? Because people start to feed them. They don't read and they don't listen. Sounds a lot like us, right? And then they start to attack, and now we want to kill them from being gator when all we had to do was abide by what was spoken. God said that everything he created was for our good. If you grew up on a farm, you ate farm to table. Hilton Head farm to table. If we would look at what God is calling us to do in 2022, it's easy. Pray. That's our secret. As the body of Christ, we pray. Not big. You don't have to get on your knees. You don't have to stand out there in the middle of the street and pray. Now, if God calls you to do so, be it. But pray. Continuously have me on your mind. 
So what does that look like? If he's in your heart, you got to think about it, right? Stop setting the same old thing. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I'm going to go to the gym. It's that. No. Pray. Get into the word of God and let God be God. Stop trying to make God like your father or the next door neighbor. Let God be God. He's not to be brought down here to be equal with us. Christ came and lived here to teach us how to live heaven on earth, and yet we still do not do it. So one, in 2022, let's agree to pray as the body of Christ. Not for ourselves, but for the brokenness in this world. For those that are lost and seeking, let's pray. For those that have found him, but don't have everything they need. They don't have the Holy Spirit because they have not received it in their life. To operate out of it, let's bring them hope. Let's pick a theme and pray over it every week. And then rotate it until God says, move on. So let's work on our soul. The second thing that God is calling us to do is to be holistic. Holistic means that we're whole. We're whole in Christ because everything Christ did was completed. Take our Sabbath. Take a day of rest. No mall, no, okay, online shopping. No, can't do that either. Even though you're not, no online shopping. Come on, ladies, say amen. No online shopping. We do it. You get them Amazon boxes and belts and so and so, and your husband come in and say, where did that box come from? I don't know. Is it for you? And we know all well is for us. Let's stop. Let's sacrifice something for the one that sacrificed all for us. So let's give up some of these worldly things. Because we have more than enough. We have a plenty. Now, I don't know about you, but I am tired of hearing about cancer, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, COVID-19. I'm tired of it affecting the body of Christ. Because Christ said he took 33 stripes for us to be healed. He said two things, baptize them in my name and make disciples. Every time you do this, do it in remembrance of me, Holy Communion. So when you take Holy Communion, you are taking your brokenness and making it whole in Christ. You are taking the blood of Christ and you're washing yourself white as snow. You have an abundance. So illness should not rest here. Now, I'm not telling you to stop going to your doctor and stop taking your medication. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is step back and look at what you're putting in God's temple. And let's be real for a minute. If you grew up on a farm, you ate a lot of fruit, you ate a lot of vegetables, but you ate a lot of those things. When you go back to Genesis, what is he calling us to do? Eat of the land, the plant, the fruit. Animals didn't eat animals. They didn't need to. They had more than enough. True story. We were in Hilton Head. We met a guy named Barry, and he gave us his testimony. He used to be United Methodist. I won't hold that against him. He's Seventh-day Adventist now. You know the two things that they pride themselves on? Prayer and eating right. Prayer and eating right, and in that order. God says everything that we blessed is blessed. It's not what goes in and what comes out, what comes out of the heart. If you're not eating right, you're eating junk, what's going to come out? Junk, and it's going to come out in a form. It may not come out in the words you say. It may come into your body, the way you do things, how you react to things, because your body is not functioning 100%. Our bodies was created to heal itself. Hello? Why aren't we doing it? Because we're poisoning ourselves, and we're choosing to do it. So Barry was saying that when he left the United Methodist, he was on a lot of medication, and he went into the Seventh-day Adventist, and he's been in there almost a year. Did a lot of praying, refused to eat like they said for a long time because he wanted to eat what he wanted, he prayed over, and so it's blessed. You're absolutely right. That's what the Word of God says. Anybody can follow the Word of God and be blessed. They don't have to believe in God. All they got to do is believe in the Word. You know how I know? Look at big companies that are still surviving after COVID-19. You look at their visions and their 
mission. What is it based on? The word of God. Be kind. Go out and do a work in your community. Feed the homeless, the sick, the shut-in. They, the, they do everything that we're called to do without lifting up salvation. That's why they're blessed. Because the word of God is fulfilled when it was written and when it was spoken. So listen and be a fulfillment to God's word. So he said he's done this for about a year, and guess what? He doesn't take his high blood pressure pills anymore. He went to the doctor. He doesn't have to. Doctor said, what are you doing? I took some things out of my diet. So gradually, the medicine started to be removed from the cabinet. Now, he didn't take it out. The doctor took it out. Understand what I'm saying now. So what I'm saying to you, in 2022, listen to God. Get your soul right according to the word of God. Give him an hour and give him a day. I'm only asking for, I tell you what, I'm going to tell you 15 minutes. I challenge you to believe that 15 minutes in God's word, in silence, in meditation, you won't see a change in your life. I challenge you to that. I want to hear the results. Somebody send me an email, Tanya underscore Reeves at yahoo.com. Starting the day. I promise you, God will fulfill his word because he's already done it. So then he gradually started thinking, taking things out of his diet. How, long, how many years has it been that most women say, I want to lose 30 pounds in the new year? You go get all the diet pills. You start eating this way. You start walking. You start going to the gym. Did you lose it? Nope, you gain. And if you lost it, you gain more than you lost because you went back to what you were familiar with. But I'm calling you to go back to God's word. Take out some things. Instead of eating fried chicken five days a week, eat it one day a week. Instead of eating at McDonald's three times a week, eat once. Make it small. Don't make it extra large. Just start gradually cutting back and pray, God, what else do you see that I need to do? How can I be a man of God? How can I be a woman of God? So, Word, temple, let's put in the temple what's clean, what we should have in our temple. Now, don't go do it all at one time. Oh, I cut this, I'm cut that. No, 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 no. You've already messed up, and it's going to be worse. Just take out a little bit at a time, just a little bit, and just see what happens. Now, after we've done that, the last thing that God is telling us to do in 2022 is tell someone that he loves them. Now, how do we do that? We start praying for God to send us someone that needs him. And when they come, let them in and connect them to God. Let your conversations be about God and about love and God's love in truth. So I thought about this scripture. It's also in Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 12. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receive, and everyone who searches, find. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you? Who, if your child asks for bread, you would give them a stone. Is there anyone here would do that? What about your grandchildren? Would you do that? Would you give them a stone if they ask for bread? Hmm, that's interesting. Keep that in your mind. Or if the child asks for fish, you give them a snake. If you then who are evil, we're not evil, we're good. I just got through reading Genesis know how to give good gifts to your children. So if the wicked know how to give good gifts to the children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So here's 2022 wrapped up before we even get to the end. If the wicked can take God's word, and give good gifts 
and receive good fruit. Be healthy and strong in their doing. Can those that have been called and chosen and created in the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit not receive much, much more? So stop and listen to God's word. Receive it in your heart and live it in the witness of the living word of God that proceeds out of his mouth. And that word says, I am. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. And I'm everything in between. Your life does not belong to you. It belongs to me. But because I wanted you, I value you, and I chose you. And now you live in our image. So love out of that. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and mind to venture out into this world with the love of Christ, listening and seeking him in every turn that we take. As you follow the star on your journey, don't look for the holy in places of power and prestige. Instead, pay attention to the ordinary, the quiet places. There may you be overcome with joy and share your gifts with creation. May God always and forever be your light. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.